Meet the Transfers Baylor Bears edition. This is the third best transfer class in the country, according to us. We ranked all of our classes and we compiled them together and uh, averaged the numbers out. I had Baylor second in the country. I love this transfer class. I think they're phenomenal. Uh, where did you have Baylor? Do you think three feels right? Yeah, I too had them second. So no qualms for me. If you get right. two two stars, again, not to get too far ahead of yourself, pretty easy to be in the top three. So. Brian Ralph knocked this down. Brian Ralph has them fifth overall. So yell at him if you think they should be higher than third, folks. But I won't fight him about it. It's not that far off. As you mentioned, it's only a three-man class, which is rare. Most of the teams near the top of our rankings have a bazillion transfers. So there's some very, very good players here. We'll go player by player, give our expectations role-wise and just in general on who they are. Uh, but first, some questions at the top. Did Scott Drew do what he set out to do with this transfer class? Yeah, I think he did. If you look at the the makeup of his last few teams, he likes bringing in those guards who have played a ton of college basketball. If you look at Ray J. Dennis, uh, you see James Akinjo before him. And now you have the best of the three in Jeremy Roach, the one who's played the most, uh, the most big games out of that group, the one, one who's played in the Final Four, uh, may have lost in that national semifinal game, but he still got there. Um, and I, I think he's sort of the the adult in the room, so to speak, alongside VJ Edge Edgecombe, who we all think will be a stud, but yeah, you know, he's still a freshman. It's nice to have a little vet vet experience in the backcourt. Yep. Completely agree. Uh, yeah. Hard to say he didn't when he got two superstar types and the uh, guaranteed starters on this team. Um, what's one thing that could have improved this class? Cause I, I think there's one loud one. He could really use like a, a, a big with, legit size um yeah. we know that baylor has money to throw around shout out to the Gaines family um we heard the the totals for both roach and and omir were upwards of a million um it's probably some more money laying around i would have tried to make a push for big Oo and get onyenzo either you try to make him work alongside omir or at least have him part of the rotation first big off the bench to really lock down the defense but yeah um it's kind of the, the glaring hole here is no reliable true five man. Yeah, just like a true shot blocking guy, even if he does nothing else, right? There isn't a player on this team that has averaged one block per game in their career. Norchad is six seven. Norchad is awesome, but I mean he's six seven. He might play six eleven, but th this is gonna be a really, really tiny team. Um, I, I think you're right. Even if it's a role player, they could have used legitimate size. And I'll add, I think they could have found I don't want to say better and be harsh on the guy, but I think the roster is also missing a true four. Like to me, Celestine is, is okay. He's good. Mm -hmm. I don't think you want him to be your starting four and maybe I'll be proven wrong on that. But when you combine that with how small they are at the five, to me, the front court could be what lets this team down if they ultimately don't achieve the goals. And you remember Jalen Bridges. They didn't get a Jalen Bridges replacement to me, even if that's what they say Celestine is. Yep. Uh, to me, they're lacking in that area. Okay, we'll go player by player. Uh, we'll work our way up the list. The first is the aforementioned Jalen Celestine. He's from California. 44% from three last season is the big number. Redshirt senior, played 26 minutes a game last year, scored eight points a game. What's his role and what do you make of his game? I think he's in the rotation slash a spot starter. Again, if if they need the size, he's six seven, can play the four. Uh, you put him next to Omir. I don't really know defensively how that works. Uh, I love Omir's game, and we'll get to it. That's kind of his one knock. Is he's not the best post defender. I don't really know if uh, Celestine has the athleticism to cover up for that. Um, but I think his ability to shoot it has decent enough size. Theoretically, could be get a little more out of him on the on the Re rebounding front too um yeah he'll at least should at least crack the rotation maybe even start yeah i think he'll start at least a couple games just because he's like the only wing-shaped guy on the team that i think you you know what you're getting um my issue is i, I think he's a guard like I, I i believe he's a guard and he's a six foot seven guard but mm -hmm. It's like you've already got a bunch of other good guards. Langston Love is off the bench. I think you're starting three small guards next to him. So, like, it, he's a guard who, in my opinion, is just a shooter. He's not going to rebound. He's not really going to defend fours. Um, to me, it, it would be 
almost rude, not rude, but worse for Baylor to ask him to play out a position at the four than it would be to just have him be the bench guard behind mm-hmm. these guys. And I kind of hope that's the role he's asked to play because I think it's what he'd be best at. If he starts, I think he may underwhelm. Um, I, I, like I said, I don't love this ad. I think he's a spot guy and that should be okay. From there, we move up. Jeremy Roach, you're well familiar as a North Carolina fan with uh, Jeremy Roach. Uh, what's his role? And are you happy to see him leave your rival? I am because Jeremy Roach hits big shots. Jeremy Roach is a a clutch performer. I mentioned it earlier. He's played in a lot of games. He has four years of college basketball experience. Um, Like, was he, he, I guess that Duke team, his freshman year would have missed the tournament, but really, 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 really good teams the last three years. Um, Yeah. And he's been the primary driver behind that. I thought he was Duke's best guard last year. Can create off the bounce. Good enough playmaker. I think he should thrive next to VJ Edgecombe as as long as he accepts the role is like, oh yeah, I am the the number two option here in the backcourt, which he seems like a team first guy. Um, yeah, it, I think that pairing can, has potential to be really, really good and just straight up electric. Yeah, I love this ad. I love Roach in general. Um, I'm going to give him the star billing role wise. Oh yeah, yeah. That's... Sorry, I I meant to say he's a star as well. Okay. I'm glad we're on the same page with that. I There are a lot of people, I think, who would just say he's a good starter, and I wouldn't get upset about that. It, to me, it's very fringe. Like, is he the star? Is he not? There are multiple stars on this team, is my takeaway. But what I love about Roach is I, I think we're going to get Jeremy Roach with a chip on his shoulder this year, and you can tell me if you feel differently. You probably know more about how he's wired than I do. But when I've watched him through the years, I've always felt like he does a lot of the little winning things. He, he's a, a decent, if not good, leader. He's just a guy who's played a lot of winning basketball, a true vet, who somewhere in the course of his career, after making a Final Four run, it felt like his own program kind of turned on him. And not not in a huge way, but just in like a we think these guys are better than you way. And the the guys that I think Duke thinks are better than Jeremy Roach have not produced at the college level, the way Jeremy Roach has. So I'm optimistic, man, a guy that old, who's done all that he's done in college and the winning teams he's been on the stars he's played with shot 43% from three last year, 14, a game, three assists, like as a secondary guy, Mm -hmm. I'm optimistic. This dude's going to show up in a Baylor uniform, ready to kill and ready to kind of make a statement Um, I think there's a world he's the best guard on this team. And I think that includes VJ Edgecombe. I know VJ is an NBA talent. I love him. But I think there's a world where Roach is the most productive guard on this team. I think it's Baylor's best guard pairing since Butler and Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Take that how you want to. Like they've had, they've had talented individuals. I don't think they've had a pairing as high upside as Roach and Edgecombe, in my opinion. And uh, I love the ad. Um, I adore him as the starting point guard for this program. The final player is Norchad Omir. We alluded to it. He's six foot seven, but God, he's one of the best productive bigs in the sport. 17 and 10 last year were his averages on a bad Miami team, 31 minutes a game, uh, 55% from the floor. And he shot a few threes last year, um, made him at a 35% clip. So maybe there's some untapped upside there. You never know. Uh, what do you think he's going to be for Baylor? Yeah, I'd say he's also a star. Both he and Roach get that star distinction for me. I'm a little bit curious how they use him. I want him to be the five because he's so good around the basket because he's so physical and strong. He's averaged a double-double every year of his career. Great offensive and defensive rebounder. It doesn't matter. He's You can use him as a mismatch, as a like a pick-and-pop five. He's even able to attack off of, I would say, two to three dribbles if he's playing against other five men, which if you put him at the four, don't think he quite has the handle to to really, you know, beat your your average or your your typical four off the bounce. So, yeah, it, it depends on, like, does, does Scott Drew want to play him at the four next to Josh O, who's sort of like the only true five on the roster? Or does he just, just lean into this smaller lineup and say, hey, we're going to be the best offense in the country. If I can get my defense to be passable, we can get pretty far in the tournament, make a run. Um, but yeah, regardless, it's it's tough to see him not averaging a double-double again because he has the opportunity. He has a really good coach. It's great teammates around him. So yeah, I love Norchad. So I completely agree. He's a dog. I, I elevated Baylor up to like second, I think, in my preseason rankings, the day they got Norchad. And then since then, they floated down to like fourth because other teams added great players too. 
But I, I just think it was the perfect add in a wide open front court that more than anything, they need production, right? Mm-hmm. They need somebody who's going to go rebound. They need somebody who's going to go score. Norchad does that better than basically any player in the portal. So he is a star. I, I'm with it. I will play devil's advocate skeptic for five seconds here. Uh, when Norchad committed, he said, paraphrasing, quote, it wasn't about the money. I want to go somewhere I can win a national championship. I believe him, but also when people say it's not about the money, usually it's about the money. And you alluded to it, like you would have liked to see maybe some additional ads, but it seems like they spent a lot on Norchad and Jeremy. Um, And and with all due respect, I don't want to say he was cashing checks last year, but Miami off a final four run was horrendous. And Norchad's numbers were maybe the most empty numbers in the sport, given what the team actually did. So I, there is a part of me, a very small part, because I love Norchad and I trust Scott Drew, but there's a part of me that is a little fearful that Norchad is just in cash my checks mode. And if he's in cash your checks mode and he's the only guy in the front court that matters, that would scare me a little for this Baylor team. I think more than anybody on this roster, the season comes down to him. If if he is at his best, if we if we see a better version of Norchad than we've seen his whole career... Baylor's one of the best teams in the country. If we get the Norchad from last year, they're probably still one of the best teams in the country, but maybe they're still missing some of that like intangible stuff and the the toughness and the defense down low. And maybe that actually hurts them a little bit. Meanwhile, Norchad doesn't mind some losses because he's used to that. And here we go. You know, Mm -hmm. that's fair. I I think, just the culture of Baylor. Well, then again, I think Larry Nieg is a really good coach and it wasn't the worst su- supporting cast around him. I think that Miami, I would more so blame Miami's issues on just injuries and getting decimated on that end. But, you know, you can squint, you can squint and see it happening. You can close your eyes and picture it where Baylor ends up another year that's closer to like 22 and 12 than this, you know, 30 win potential team that we see. Yeah, I'm just keeping a finger on the pulse of that. Like, I I might get one game in and be like, concerns are gone. I'm all the way in. Norchad's great. I know he's a great player. But I, I would not have thrown Norchad last year in the bucket of, like, guys that are winning basketball players. It felt like he was out for his numbers mm-hmm. on a team that didn't give a damn if they lost or not because they're each making $2 million that year. And... I don't think like I I was happy to hear him say he wants to change that. It ain't about money. It's about winning. Let's see it is is where I'm at with Norchad, but he is a superstar on paper and hopefully we do see it. That's the class, only a three-man class. But when you add Roach and and Omir, it's going to be rated as highly as it is. Uh, Simple questions to end this superlative time. Who's the best player in this class by the end of the season? I think it's Omir still. Yeah, um, uh, and that's not a knock on Roach at all. I just think the opportunities there has the history of production, and we we haven't really seen Scott Drew have a big who is that. I mean, skill might be. I wouldn't think. I don't think of Omir as much of a skill guy as much as just like a dog who does the dirty work and can score a ton around the basket. But still, we haven't seen that at Baylor in a while. So I'm gonna go with him. Who? Uh, how did Norchad do against like Armando? Do we know? Norchad played really well in the game in Chapel Hill. Um, he took Armando off the bounce a couple times. And I want to he might have hit like four threes against North Carolina. It was the game that RJ Davis had 42 points. What did he, he had 22 and five, then 20 and eleven he had, against he had, Carolina? Uh against Duke in a 30 point loss. He had nine and ten. All right, I'm just I'm yeah I'm trying to figure out like it's what what does he do against the best bigs? Because you're in the Big Twelve now, and instead of two teams with good bigs, you're gonna play like ten. So I yeah. don't know. Ah, uh, Norchad, looking at I just pulled up that that box score. He was only three for ten from two against UNC. Um, okay. four for nine from three, which maybe that's a little more volatile, a little more unpredictable. That would be your cause for concern, just going up against better bigs. But I don't know. I I still trust him. I want the answer to be Jeremy Roach really badly, but I'm going to say Norchad. I think Norchad will be slightly more productive because BJ Agecombe might be so good that Jeremy Roach isn't used the way I think he could be used. Who's the player that improves the most from the start to the end of the year? Kind of feels like this needs to be Celestine, unless we're 
taking a different angle? Yeah, I mean, they're all old. I don't know how much more any of them can improve. I actually might go with Roach just because, like, Scott Drew's just been a wizard with guards for, what, the past five years now? Um, True. It seems like he gets the most out of them to where even, like, is there a world where both Edgecombe and Roach average north of 17 points a game? Is There's that a world, team? for sure. I mean, it's yeah. probably the best offense in the country if it happens, but I think it's a it's in the realm of possibilities. Yeah. Yeah, I think if I was doing, like, points per game projections for this team, I think I'd have, like, Roach, Edgecombe, and Norchad all at, like, 15, which kind of feels crazy. But, like, if they're that balanced and those three are all that good, this team mm -hmm. could be insane. Uh, I like that call, though. The the angle of, like, Roach gets comfortable under Scott Drew by the end of the year I, th I think is a really good one, so I'll agree with you. Roach will be the most improved. Give me a transfer hot take from one of these three guys or the Baylor class in general. What's the take? Mm, man. Uh, I'll go ahead and say Jeremy Roach averages a career high in points. I like that. I like that. Um Yeah, I think it's got to be Roach based for me. I've, I've been singing his praises and then answering Norchad for all this other stuff. I think uh, I'll just say Roach leads this team in scoring. That'll be my answer. I think it, it, they're all going to be close, but I think Roach ends up being ahead of Edgecombe and Norchad. Um, what a class, man. Baylor's going to be really, really fun to watch. Congrats to Scott Drew for building this. If you want to see our other 20 videos in our Meet the Transfers Transfer Class Ranking Series, we're dropping three per day all of this week and next week. Thank you for watching. Carl, you know what I love about you? That I'm handsome? You're reliable. I can count on you. You know, honestly, you remind me of Aaron Henry a little bit. Remember when, like, you know, their back was against the wall. Nothing was going right. And man just showed up every day. He didn't make excuses. There were no problems. There were just solutions. Sounds like me. That's you. And it also reminds me of Duncan Mechanical Solutions. Because if you're looking for quality furnace repair, look no further than the heating and air experts that you can trust. Comfort and quality are their standard. They're an HVAC company that serves Northeast Indiana and Southern Michigan. Whether it's heating and air conditioning, plumbing, kitchen and bath remodeling, or emergency services when you need them most, Duncan Mechanical Solutions has reliable service that you can count on. Cart, remember when your basement almost exploded? I remember when my basement almost exploded. I remember when my, my furnace itself was acting funny. I remember when my AC was acting funny. I wish I had Duncan in my back pocket. I wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah, I mean, I've never been anywhere in northern Indiana or southern Michigan that hasn't been perfectly cool or perfectly warm, depending on when the day called for. And that's because of Duncan Mechanical Solutions. Uh, they are the presenting sponsor for the month of July. Shout out to Duncan Mechanical Solutions. Go to DuncanMechanicalSolutions.com to learn more.